Success in flight did not come without failure. During the past century, explorers from Earth have failed many times to escape from their planet, where they have been imprisoned by the chains of gravity since the dawn of time. But with each failure came new knowledge, which over the years led to success, enabling space pioneers to build a celestial highway to take them on voyages where they had never been. In the world of space flight, Hardware success requires reliable design, manufacturing, and testing. After being manufactured and assembled with precision, spacecraft are tested in a laboratory to determine if they can survive the rigorous launching into orbit and other hostilities of the space environment. The idea of testing a machine before flying it began long before rocket flight commenced in the 1940s. The Wright brothers built their own wind tunnel and tested a variety of wing shapes. They also flew more than 1,000 flights at Kitty Hawk with a powerless glider during 1902, one year before their historical powered flight. Wilbur Wright, to allay parental fears about the 1903 flight, wrote a letter to his father in which he said, the man who wishes to keep at the problem long enough to really learn anything positively must not take dangerous risks. Carelessness and overconfidence are usually more dangerous than deliberately accepted risks, Wilbur Wright concluded. The Wright brothers understood that flying was risky, but felt the dangers could be understood, controlled, and accepted. The tradition of flight testing begun by the Wright brothers is continued today in a broadly expanded way at one of the world's leading space science laboratories, NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center just outside of Washington, D.C. Goddard is among the world's leading pioneers in developing the technology for building and environmentally testing scientific instruments, spacecraft, and other space systems. Goddard has the in-house capability to conceive, design, manufacture, test, and deliver scientific instruments and complete space systems to investigate the physical universe in which we live. Goddard's overall capability to support wide-ranging scientific investigations makes it one of the most unique space science laboratories in the world. During the 25 years that Goddard's hardware capabilities were being developed, more than 40 complete spacecraft systems were integrated and tested. Services for another 2,000 sounding rocket missions were also provided. The Goddard team, always striving for excellence, has established a reliability record that is unparalleled in space technology. Since Goddard's doors opened for business in 1960, all spacecraft or spaceflight systems which were built, integrated, and tested at the Goddard Space Flight Center have worked successfully in orbit. The manufacturing and testing facilities at Goddard were designed originally for the small explorer class of spacecraft. Several modifications were made over the years to accommodate larger spacecraft or space systems, like the Orbiting Astronomical Observatory, International Ultraviolet Explorer, Solar Maximum Mission, and the OSS-1 pallet. Currently, Goddard is integrating and testing the Cosmic Background Explorer, or COBE for short. COBE is the largest spacecraft which can be integrated and tested using existing Goddard facilities. Goddard plans to expand existing integration and testing facilities to accommodate the larger spacecraft under development today, as well as those being designed for the 21st century. The complex technologies associated with the development of space flight systems require the intimate partnership of engineers, technicians, and scientists to accomplish rapid progress at the frontiers of knowledge. The design, manufacturing, and environmental testing teams at Goddard work in harmony, like the members of a symphony orchestra, to produce a result far beyond the capability of any single individual. The Goddard facilities are instruments in the hands of professionals who operate them, and are among the best in the aerospace community. 
Goddard maintains a complete manufacturing facility, including computer-aided manufacturing equipment and traditional manually operated machines. By using computer-aided manufacturing techniques, spaceflight hardware components can be machined using precise computer-controlled equipment. Computer-aided manufacturing allows complex machining tasks to be performed, including geometrical configurations with intersections of curves and angles that cannot be machined using traditional methods. Spacecraft and instrument components are electrochemically processed to guard against oxidation and to provide for thermal and electrical conductivity and electrical resistance. A wide range of electroplating capabilities is available, including nickel, black nickel, copper, gold, iridite, anodized, silver, and electropolishing. For spacecraft thermal purposes, inorganic paints that are not commercially available are formulated and applied to flight hardware. Composite coatings and techniques are developed for the vacuum deposition of metals on spacecraft surfaces and experiments. All of the protective visors for the astronauts' helmets are vacuum coated at Goddard using a unique process. Plastic and elastomer technology and fabrication services for constructing and assembling spacecraft and experimental components are available. The ultraviolet transmitting plexiglass light pipes for the energetic gamma ray experiment telescope, which will fly on the gamma ray observatory, were manufactured at Goddard. Space systems manufactured by Goddard are qualified through a rigorous verification program to assure flight readiness. Components are subjected to a wide range of tests and environmental exposures that simulate peak loads to be encountered during their lifetime. After a spacecraft has been fully integrated, the system is tested to make sure it works under anticipated flight and orbital conditions. Goddard's environmental testing capabilities are broadly divided into structural testing, magnetic and electromagnetic measurements, and space simulation. Structural testing includes all phases of static and dynamic testing, covering vibration, shock, and peak loading environments the hardware encounters during pre-launch, launch, orbit, retrieval, and landing. These tests are conducted to validate the integrity of the flight structure. Static load testing provides a solution to the increasing need for step stress testing of structures using hydraulic loading systems. Acceleration testing of structures is an alternative to static load testing. The launch phase simulator is a high capacity centrifuge and imposes loads on a structure typical of actual flight acceleration. A unique facility, Goddard's launch phase simulator can exert acceleration forces up to 30 Gs on space structures weighing up to 5,000 pounds. A dynamic test called modal survey is also conducted to measure the response of structures to vibratory loads. The modal survey allows for a direct comparison of the actual modal parameters with the mathematical model. Vibration exciters, which generate a range of sine and random forces over a frequency range of 5 to 2,000 hertz, anywhere between 30 pounds to 35,000 pounds, are available. These exciter systems simulate the types of vibration space hardware experience during launching and again during re-entry aboard the space shuttle. To simulate the noise environment during launching, space flight components are tested in an acoustic facility which consists of a reverberation chamber, acoustic horns, and noise generators. Noise levels up to 150 decibels, which exceed the shuttle environment level inside the shuttle payload bay, can be generated in the acoustic facility. After structural loads testing is completed, the spacecraft is subjected to ultra-fine vacuum and chemical cleaning before it enters the clean room to begin electronic assembly and integration. Clean room standards at Goddard are among the strictest in the aerospace industry. If particles such as dust or human dandruff or contaminants such as grease or other hydrocarbons migrate to sensitive surfaces, they could degrade component performance. Contaminants can compromise the objective of a scientific instrument or can be the direct cause of a total spacecraft failure. Goddard operates a main clean room for spacecraft assembly, 
and several clean tents for the assembly of subsystems and instruments. The guarded contamination control system filters the air to prevent particles of a size larger than one three hundredth the diameter of a single human hair from entering the clean room. Spacecraft and flight components also undergo magnetic and electromagnetic measurements. At the magnetic test facility, technicians perform simulations of the magnetic field environment of near-Earth orbit or planetary space for calibrating instruments and spacecraft. The magnetic test facility, totally constructed from non-magnetic materials, is the only one of its kind in the United States, making it a national resource. The Department of Defense and several other government agencies, as well as private companies, use the facility. Shielded rooms are available for electromagnetic interference and compatibility testing of flight hardware in a clean environment. The frequency and amplitude of intentionally generated signals, as well as spurious signals produced by the hardware, are measured in the electromagnetic test facility. Electromagnetic compatibility problems which could interfere with spacecraft or instrument operation are detected and corrected. Spacecraft undergo their final tests in the space environment simulator. Although each of the many working parts of a spacecraft have been tested earlier at load levels higher than those expected for their space mission, they are now asked to work again at expected loads as one single spacecraft system. Under vacuum conditions, spacecraft experience a wide range of thermal conditions, from a minus 300 degrees Fahrenheit to plus 200 degrees Fahrenheit. During the entire thermal vacuum testing period, spacecraft are operated at extreme and normal temperature, just as if they were in orbit. Goddard has several thermal vacuum chambers of various sizes, up to 30 feet in diameter by 40 feet high. Goddard's history in developing space systems for orbital flight has been long and distinguished. Goddard is the only NASA federal government field center with an in-house capability of taking space hardware from design through manufacturing and testing. With an eye toward the future, Goddard has been assigned a major role for servicing spacecraft systems under development, such as the Hubble Space Telescope, GRO, UARS, and future spacecraft such as AXAF. Goddard's part in spacecraft servicing on orbit is an outgrowth of the center's success in the pioneering Solar Max repair mission. To accommodate future spacecraft systems, such as the Explorer series, as well as the co-orbiting and polar platforms for space station, Goddard is planning to expand existing integration and testing facilities. For this next generation of spacecraft to work, Operations will be demonstrated first on the ground in a clean laboratory environment to protect the flight hardware from contamination. Facilities which provide a contamination-free environment are essential to the reliable performance of the large scientific payloads being designed for the future. The Goddard Space Flight Center stands ready to take the next major step in space research. In 1984, President Reagan committed the United States to having a permanently manned space station operating within a decade. The President said that a space station was needed for peaceful, economic, and scientific gain. Space Station is NASA's next logical step in America's space program. Goddard is planning facilities to support NASA's space science program in the 1990s and space exploration well into the 21st century, when pioneering men and women from many nations will work and live together in space.